We just want to say we're just thrilled to be here. Very excited for the opportunity we've been given. Indiana University is uh, well represented here by our, our captains that are next to me and uh, just really want to uh, convey um, how proud of these young men that I am and the way that they've conducted themselves um, not only this week but uh, as they've led our football team. And so really been a, a special year for us and an opportunity for us to be able to finish out our season here in Jacksonville uh, in the Gator Bowl is a tremendous honor for our university, for our football program, and for what we're building at IU. And so I just want to thank the Gator Bowl and, and uh, I know Rich Thompson has just done a tremendous job and his whole staff and, and uh, everyone involved with, with this uh, organization has been a first class from the very beginning for our first trip here. And, and our players have enjoyed the week, a lot of great opportunities and, and uh, enjoy the weather. The sunshine's been good the last few days and, and uh, just appreciate uh, the time that we have together. One last opportunity as uh, the 2019 uh, Indiana Hoosiers get to spend together preparing. Now we're into 2020 officially, but uh, finishing up our season in, 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 a, in a great, great way and great opportunity for us. So the young men that we have here with us, uh, introduce these guys in the far left, Coy Cronk, one of our uh, four-year starters, senior captain, uh, awesome young man, great, great player for us. And Peyton Ramsey, our quarterback, um, done a tremendous job this season. Um, great player better young man, a uh, high character guy, as all five of these guys are, but appreciate uh, what Peyton's done for this program. And then uh, Nick Westbrook here, one of our wide receivers, a uh, tremendous young man as well um, in all areas of life. Uh, as as I, I could say for all five of these guys, they're not just uh, really good players on the field, but but uh, um, excellent classroom and high character guys represent all of us at a high, high level. And then Simon Stepanek, uh, one of our offensive linemen, Big Ten player, as many of these guys are, um, just uh, – Special young man, great work ethic, love everything he's brought to our program, and we appreciate all these guys as well. And then Raekwon Jones, um, another Florida kid. we got 26 Florida players on our roster, and we have a couple of them sitting up here, and, and uh, Raekwon's been a special player for us and, and a linebacker um, that's just been, as a fifth-year senior, such a great leader. So I just want to say, as, as you go across and you did, you talk to these guys and ask them questions, but uh, you had a lot of uh, – this, this group kind of represents uh, kind of who we are this year. You know, we've been through some adversity. Uh, Coy had a tough season in, in injury, uh, game four, but has, matter of fact, just had somebody that was at practice the other day just commenting about how impressed they were with his leadership and the way that he's just coached every single rep, getting these guys ready to play. And that's just how he's been and responded to this uh, um, a uh, challenge that uh, that the good Lord has thrown his way that wasn't expected, and uh, but he's he's grown because of it, and I really appreciate his leadership. And the guy, guy like Peyton Rams, we all know his story and has the season started and the way he's been able to uh, dis display so much grit and toughness and leadership and character through um, not being named the starter and then coming back and being the guy um, and leading this football team to the Gator Bowl. So uh, go through and Raekwon as he's gone through some adversity and struggles along the way and at home and and uh, the hurricane that devastated his family in in, in the uh, Panhandle there and uh, just to be able to fight through all that and and then Nick having a ACL injury that uh, sidelined him for one of the seasons that we were here and he'd be able to battle through that and then and then Simon's had challenges and with his health and different things along the way and these guys have all battled and uh, they got tremendous character tremendous grit and tremendous toughness so I think uh, their stories are unique and special and I'm proud to be uh, their coach and proud to be the um, representative of Indiana University here today thank you very much I'm ready for questions Raise your hands, and we'll pass the mics. Yeah. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Raekwon, uh, it's been a month since you guys have played a game, and uh, just in watching the bowl games that have going on, and you know, tackling can tend to be a little sloppy when there's been much of a break. How much of a point of emphasis have you guys tried to place on that going into tomorrow night, make sure you're a good tackling team tomorrow night? Oh, it's been a very strong point of emphasis. You know, we practice tackling every day through with circuits and just – you know, make sure we're finishing properly when we um do, going against scout team, going against our offense, Skelly, everything. You know, we emphasize tackling and something we're going to continue to emphasize today, tomorrow, until the, until it's game time and through the game. Yeah, I'd like to address this to Raekwon and then Nick, if you could. Uh, you know, everybody, it's 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 pretty obvious why coaches in the Northeast and Midwest come down to Florida to, because of the talents down here. But talk about the reasons why you decided to go to Indiana leave Florida and go up there? You know, I, when I came on my official there, I just loved the vibe that the players gave. You know, 
campus is, is beautiful. The opportunity for education is great. And just, you know, really it just meshed well with um, all the players that were already there that kind of took me in as family, made me feel real welcomed, made me feel like I was already a part of the team, and just kind of, you know, show me, like, kind of how they wanted to change the program. You know, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to come help and be a part of, be a part of change, you know, change something. I didn't want to go to a school that was – already having success and I was just going to be there. I just wanted to go there and be a part of the change. And I think that, I mean, that was just, that was important to me. And just the family atmosphere was important. All the way in the back. Oh, yeah. So same, pretty much the same thing as Raekwon just said. You know, the biggest thing was when I came to IU on my visit, uh, you know, it just felt like family. It felt like home. Uh, it was kind of like a gut feeling that it just felt like the right place for me to be at. Uh, then also, like he said, you know, great education opportunities and, you know, the opportunity to change a program. Uh, it all just meshed well and just ended up with me, you know, choosing IU. All the way in the back. This is for Peyton. Uh, Peyton, I saw where you were named after Peyton Manning. Uh, have you ever talked to your parents? Have they ever talked to you about why specifically of all the quarterbacks out there that you were named after Peyton Manning? Yeah, so actually kind of funny. Uh, when I was, you know, when I was about to be born, Peyton Manning was still at Tennessee. Um, and I, my parents just said they were, you know, just sitting down watching the game. Uh, they just liked the name. Uh, wasn't really because they wanted me to grow up and, and you know, gain this skill set after Peyton Manning. It was just kind of my mom liked the name. Um, my dad liked the quarterback. So I guess those kind of two, those two things kind of went together. And, and here I am. It's just just following up on on earlier for uh, Raekwon um, uh, uh, and and Nick. Is you're back home now for your final game in your in your home state just in the hours leading up to the game is was it been like and I know we've asked you guys in the past about this but it's kind of hit yet that you're back home for your final college game I've just been full of excitement and just thankful for this opportunity it's been such a blessing and it's just a great opportunity for um you know us kids from Florida who really can't get family to come all the way to Indiana every weekend or or whatever the situation may be just an opportunity to be able to get as much family to be able to come watch the game and watch us play in our last game as uh, Hoosiers is just a, it's a, it's a blessing, a great opportunity. Yeah, you know, it feels like I'm back at home. You know, we're practicing at a, at a high school field, local high school field. Uh, and it just, it just took me back to, you know, playing back in high school here in Florida and just, you know, the air is different and just, you know, nothing but excitement. Can't wait to, can't wait to play tomorrow. Tom, we've asked you this in different ways over the last few weeks, but kind of following up on the question for tackling about Rick one, um, what's the balance you've tried to strike in terms of the intensity of preparation this last month or so? When have you wanted your guys kind of full pads, full go, you know, sort of long practices, and when have you wanted to maybe taper things down from a physical perspective? Yeah, it's a you know, it's a good question because it's it's such a, a delicate balance that you go through to try to decide how much to do, how often to do it, uh, how soon to do it. Uh, you know, obviously you find out when you're going to play, and that really kind of determined our calendar. We, you know, obviously playing a late bowl game here in January um, allowed us to be able to give our some, some guys some time away initially. And so the first couple weeks we uh, mostly spent time in the weight room, getting our, our bodies rested and recovered from a long season, and uh, coaches out recruiting. And then we did a couple player practices where we were able to do some seven-on-sevens and some things like that, but no, no – pads in the first couple weeks we came back that first Friday uh, when the coaches came off the road and we went Friday Saturday Sunday and went full pads uh, or at least in shells so all three of those days and helmets and and uh, tackling and hitting and trying to be physical and just trying to balance that out to, to where we just did the way I t you know explained it to our team and talked to our coaches was about was the way we would handle a bye week type of schedule in terms of how long we practiced and uh, the focus on technique and fundamentals really not getting into scheme we did the first first six practices we, we, we did a three-day cycle we go three days on and then a, two days off and then three days on and a day off and then after we got those six practices in of full pads uh, type mindset where they weren't quite as long of practices but it was a lot of technique and fundamentals and we didn't do any scout teams at all then we got into uh, the full um, the prep for uh, for Tennessee, where you go through and do your scouting reports, and you have scout teams, and you divide them up that way, and and you become more sp specific to <laughs> schemes that you're going to install and things you want to do against your opponents. So that's the way we handled it, and uh, to try and balance it out, so to give us a great great chance to get 12 really solid padded practices in, and you have a couple walkthrough practices as well to be able to lead up to to kick off. So I don't think there's any perfect way to do it. Uh, you have to trust your guys. You, you, you know, I reached out to, to, to previous Big Ten programs that played in this bowl game because of the calendar that it, that it affects in other places I've been and where we've had similar uh, types of schedules.
schedules and try to, to come up with the best one for our guys because you want them to be fresh, but at the same time you want to maximize the physicality piece so you can recover, yet still be sharp and crisp to be able to tackle and block and execute a high level on game day. Yeah, um, for any of the players, I know the goal was set kind of uh, with the leadership council of the summer, not just to get to a bowl game, but to win one. How would you describe maybe the sense of urgency in practice this week? Is there a feeling of, you know, not just happy to be here, just kind of uh, focused in? I would say definitely there's been a, a great sense of urgency at practice. You know, we know what the, uh, our number one objective is and our goal is. And, um, you know, all the guys from young to old know what the objective is. And just talking amongst each other when we're in our rooms, you know, we got to win this game. We're going to win this game. That's our goal. And it's, it's been very clear what our mission is. And, you know, the guys have locked in, came to work at practice. When it's time to work, when it's time to have fun, they've had fun. So I think the guys are really handling, handling this trip well and keeping that urgency level high. Back over here in the back. Coach Allen. Uh, it's the uh, 75th anniversary of this game. What have you told your players about the history of this game? And any other player want to comment about playing in the 75th game? Well, we have talked about it. You know, I kind of mentioned and went through some of the names of some of the players that uh, are going to be recognized in the, uh, the the anniversary group, the 22 players that uh, went through that list of guys. I'm actually going to talk about it even more tonight. Um, but uh, just to let them understand uh, the, the type of the talent that has played in this game in the last 75 years is, is very impressive. You know, some of the very best uh, uh, future Hall of Famers in the NFL, collegiate Hall of Famers, All-Americans, and uh, some of the best have ever played the game. And so it's a tremendous honor to be in that group. And uh, as I shared with them, you, you go through and you, you, get, you get a player MVP uh, that's going to be selected tomorrow night. Uh, the challenge is to be able to uh, play to a level where somebody from our program gets the opportunity to get that and be distinctly recognized for, for all uh, the history of football as the guy that came here and played and performed at a high level. And as I tell our team all the time, when, when the team uh, plays at a high level, individuals get recognized. And so, but the team always comes first. So, but I think our guys are uh, uh, really understanding that this is a special bowl, it's a great venue, and we're very, very blessed and, and excited to be here. This is either for uh, Peyton or Nick. You guys had a chance to look at the uh, film on Tennessee's defense. What kind of stands out to you guys? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing, they're a good physical defense. Uh, they're big up front, and they, they kind of throw a bunch of different things at you to try to keep you on your toes. So, um, you know, just kind of trusting our game plan, kind of, you know, just continuing to do what we do best because they're good at what they do. Um, they're big and physical, like I said. So sticking to our game plan, uh, just continuing to push forward and, and, you know, trying to execute the next play is, is kind of our biggest thing against them. Yeah, you know, piggyback off Peyton, you know, they're big, physical, uh, they play sound defense and, you know, have a, had a lot of different looks that we just have to be prepared for. So the biggest thing is just, you know, get prepared, watch as much film as we can uh, so we know what to expect, you know, when we're, whenever we get these different looks and, you know, just keep chugging along and, you know, play our game because we know it's going to work for us. Uh, Simon, um, how is your health? I mean, how, how optimistic are you about your ability to maybe play or not and kind of how have you handled this latest a setback. Yeah, it's definitely tough being in such a highly touted game and uh, being a game time decision. That's what I am right now. So uh, just working through some things, uh, really helping the guys as much as I can and uh, just trying to get healthy and be back for this game is my main priority right now. So all the way in the back. Uh, Coach, this is kind of a follow up to what I asked Peyton earlier, but when you first meet him and you find out his name's Peyton, he's got brothers named Montana and Drew. Well, what is your thought as a coach? Well, you know, definitely a coach's kid family, you know, um, when you think that way. But uh, matter of fact, the only thing I've really heard that's kind of top that, I got a buddy of mine that has three children, and he, and he's a, he was a, always a defensive coordinator, and he named him Mike, Sam, and Will, or his three children. And so for those of you who know football, that's the three linebacker positions. And so, um, you know, when you, and my dad was my high school coach, and so he didn't go to that extreme. But, uh, you know, I think it's pretty cool that uh, to have named after guys that, that play and, and the sports that you love. And, and obviously from mom's perspective, it's usually just the, the, the name that you just like, you know, and after going through that process with my wife. And so, but I, I just think it just kind of exudes uh, the family that he comes from. They love football. It's a big part of their family. Uh, they obviously talk about it a lot. They watch it a lot. And uh, it's uh, been manifested in the, the names that they have for their kids. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is for Ray, Raekwon and for Peyton. Earlier in the year when I was talking to WAP, I asked him what's it like to be part of an Indiana team that could legitimately win six, seven, eight games. And he paused and looked at me. He said, you mean nine? 
<laughs> Obviously, you guys know the history of the program. What is it like to have a chance to be one of the very few Indiana teams to win nine games? You know, it's, it's a blessing, you know, and just it's a testament to all the work that people in this facilities and this program put in from the players to the coaches to the training staff to the strength and just, just everything. And it's just a truly blessing. We want to take full advantage of this opportunity. And, um, you know, we know what's at, what's at stake and what we can do. So, I mean, we're just going to keep our heads down and go to work. I think it says a lot about the guys that are sitting up front here um, and, and the older guys that are in that locker room that have kind of gone through the growing pains and um, continued to fight and continued to push forward even though it, it was hard and it was tough. And, and the leaders kind of stepped up and, and pushed us forward, kind of propelled us forward. And um, so many guys that came before us allowed us to be in this position. And it's kind of something that we saw coming because of the guys in the locker room and the guys that came before us. Uh, Coach, now that you've had time to look at film uh, of this Tennessee team, what is what, was there something in particular that jumped out between the start of the season and then the way they ended the season, one thing that just jumped and caught your eye? Oh, I think overall just a uh, higher level of execution, more consistent play. You know, uh, they were turning the ball over early, which is never a good thing um, for a team, and, and uh, start eliminating those mistakes and protecting the football better. And uh, I just think that they, um, you know, when you look at them on both sides of the football, they've been, been sound defensively throughout the entire season. Um, and as, as the players have mentioned, just big physical guys. And But when you just, you know, they're a young, a new staff, you know, a couple of years in there, and they're trying to put in their new system. And, and uh, you know, just kind of like how we experienced this, you, you start uh, finding ways to win some of these close games, and then the Confidence grows and it builds, and, and that's what you see on film is a team that is playing their best football at the end, and uh, they're able to run the football uh, offensively, stop the run defensively, and and uh, not give up big plays defensively, and then and force you to put you in a lot of binds. You know, uh, in terms of their receiver core, it's just really if you say something that jumps out of you, it's their receivers. You know, when I first watched them, and and you know we're we're an aggressive style of defense, and we play a lot of man coverage, and we got to win those one on ones. That's what we do, and that's what we're how we're going to play, and we don't. We're not bashful about that, but uh, you know, you just start looking at those matchups and how that's going to play itself out, and and they they win a lot of 50-50 balls. You know, those guys jump up and and go get it, and, and the quarterback's doing a better job of getting those balls to those guys. And so, when you do that, you eliminate those mistakes, and you play more consistent, you start winning those close games, and which is what they've done. And you know, they've won six out of the last seven. It's been impressive how they finished. Coach Allen, you'd previously mentioned over here. You had previously mentioned that. Tennessee maybe cl as closely reminded you to Penn State in your conference. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and what some of those uh, things you see in common with them? Yeah, we went through even, you know, we have coordinators meeting, you know, on our on a, a normal Thursday as we prepare, which was yesterday, and, and uh, sat down going through and just, just once again, just kind of confirmed. I thought that when I watched him on film, and when you go through it, everybody's kind of, hey, you know, who you kind of compare him to. And, and, when, and I do it from a perspective of, you know, it kind of starts with the line of scrimmage. You know, offensive line is where, because I'm as a defensive guy, the first thing I watch is their offensive line, and then you start watching their defensive line. And, and uh, just seeing um, just high-level guys, physical guys, guys that have good bursts on defense and guys that are big and strong on offense. And, and then you start going and, and looking at their skill guys from there. And, and I just think the way they run to the football defensively, uh, the multiplicity of their defense as well, and it's just the, the talent level. I mean, they have a lot of good football players you know, and just high, a lot of guys highly regarded out of high school that, 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 that those whoever decides who those players are, they figure out that they rank them as such and give them stars and all that. And, and then, then when they go to college, they got to prove that they're worthy of those things and so they got a lot of guys that, that have been highly regarded for sure and, and they're playing good football so uh, I just think it's a matter of speed a size and uh, to me that's where we kind of felt like as a staff that that's they were probably closest to with Penn State all the way in the back right here Raekwon, this question's for you. We've mentioned that Tennessee has won six of the last seven five straight. Defensively for you guys what are you gonna do to slow down that red hot Tennessee team? I mean I think first things first, you know, we gotta stop the run. You know, that's what they're good at. That's what they've executed at all season. And um, that's going to be the key for us, to stop the run and eliminate big plays. You know, they have big play receivers. They got a quarterback who can sling it down there. They got some uh, O-line that can protect. So we got to get pressure. We got to win one-on-one -on -one matches, like Coach said. And, you know, stop the run. That's just – that's our mindset going into this game. We got to be physical. We got to be nasty. We got to be strong because that's what they bring into the table. So we're going to have to bring it right back. Right down here in front. Uh, for Peyton, when, when you're looking at – film going into a bowl game you know you, you've got a team that's played a bunch of games but then there's about a month off so I guess schematically a lot of things could change in that time at that point does it become more about 
personnel kind of on both sides and y'all just doing what you do going into a game? I think that is the biggest thing. I think the biggest thing, it comes down to execution. Um, and when you have this big month, uh, you have this huge gap of time where you have the opportunity to watch so much film and they've thrown so many different looks um, and they have so many different schemes. It comes down to us and, and what we've been good at all year and continu continuing to execute that. And that's kind of been a point of emphasis for us, just running the plays that, that we're good at, maybe a different look here or a different look there, but more than anything, just continuing to execute and do what we do best. Uh, Peyton, when, when you think about all the, the defenses that you've prepared for, how does Tennessee compare when it comes to just identifying coverages and, and locating pressure? Yeah, I, I think that's also Penn State. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of different multiple. They, they Personnel-wise, it's, it's similar, uh, like Coach Allen just mentioned. But I think schematically, uh, Penn State did a, a bunch of different things. Um, they were good. They were uh, Their D-line was good. Um, mul very multiple in the things that they did. And some good linebackers, long, tall, lanky, rangy guys that – um, that are really athletic. So uh, I would say schematically they also line up to Penn State uh, pretty similarly. Let's go right here for the last question. Yeah, uh, last question for Peyton. Uh, through all the ups and downs you've been through this year, what do you think you've learned about yourself? Uh, I, I think I've learned that, that I'm a fighter um, and that just continuing to fight through, through adversity is the biggest thing. And, um, I, you know, I didn't really know how I was going to respond. Um, it was hard initially. It was kind of a roller coaster ride uh, of emotions. But... I've just learned that I'm a fighter, um, that, that tough guys win, and um, as long as you're, as you're a tough guy and you keep fighting, then, then good things are going to happen. Okay, I, I just want to say one real quick thing. You know, we have our 75th team that will be here um, tomorrow night to watch you play, and uh, Archie will be here mm -hmm. because he beat his son out as the quarterback <laughs> of our 75th team. So uh, let's put Peyton back on the board for our 100th team. How's that sound? Right. Okay, <laughs> Coach, thank you so much for coming. Thank everybody for being here, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night.